The Secretary, some questions. First of all, and I know you could probably give us a three-hour lecture on this and still have more to say about it, but if you give us the 30 to 60-second version on how important is it that the U.S. remain the world reserve currency? Well, I believe we der derive significant benefit from the dollar serving as the reserve currency. Um, it's an important way in which we lower the cost, the borrowing cost, um, that the federal government pays on its outstanding debt. And um, I would say that in imposing sanctions and um, trying to address um, global, global problems like Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the fact that the U.S. dollar is used so widely in transactions is facilitates our ability to um, impose those sanctions. Now, this week, Russia and China got together, uh, and they Russia has said they're going to start using the, the yuan to settle trade deals. Uh, does this concern you? And they, they also said that this would help accelerate the process of establishing a multipolar world order, which, of course, would mean a weakened U.S. On, on, the nat on the global stage. Well, I certainly want to see the dollar remain as the world's reserve currency. And um, there is a motivation that Russia and China have to try to develop another, another system that avoids the use of the dollar. But this is something that's tremendously difficult to accomplish. And I have confidence that um, the dollar will remain the world's reserve currency for a long time to come, in spite of there being various efforts to create systems to get around it. Now, in 2008, the U.S. National Intelligence Council said in a report they produced that there's an unprecedented shift in relative wealth and economic power from the West to the East now underway, and they expected it to continue, uh, that our relative strength will decline. Uh, and they said it was because of this. They said the transfer of global wealth and the economic power is now underway. Uh, it's unprecedented in modern history. And they said it comes from two sources. We're sending oil and gas revenues overseas, and we're sending manufacturing overseas. Uh, yet a number of the policies that this administration continues to uh, embrace support ESG, which we've seen. You know, China's not following that. Russia's not following that. They continue to build coal plants. China and Russia are talking about building another pipeline. Um, and, and yet we seem to just be hamstringing, hamstringing Western countries on the front when we were producing energy and oil, and gas, petroleum products more responsibly cleaner than anyone else. Um, one, one of the things I'm concerned about this, we've, we've talked to a number of banks. Uh, I realize most of this is the SEC pushing this, but from your standpoint, we have European countries trying to impose these regulations on U.S. banks uh, that work in their markets, and therefore the the U.S. businesses that do companies in that. And from a diplomatic perspective, it would seem that regardless of where you are on on the ESG front for or against, from a diplomatic perspective, uh, you would be standing up for for U.S. banks and U.S. businesses against what other any other country's regulators would be trying to enforce on that. Uh, do you have diplomatic efforts underway, or, or what could be done? To, to combat that? Well, we do have frictions with various countries, including the European Union, um, when we have differences in our regulations when it comes to things like disclosure of climate-related risks. Um, ideally, we would have a common system globally. Um, I think that would level the playing field and reduce the burdens on businesses of what they're forced to disclose, but countries are making significant efforts to address climate change now, which I regard as a good thing, and tensions arise when we go about doing that in different ways. But we you do have I'm, I'm sorry, I only have 20 seconds left. I wanted to ask you one more question. Uh, you mentioned leveling the playing field. I would think we'd want the U.S. to be more competitive than other countries. Uh, Biden has his stated policy, he has said himself that he's trying to create a, a multipolar world. It's an objective he shares with Putin and Xi. Uh, do you sh also share the goal of a multipolar world? Yeah, I'm not 
sure exactly what it is you're driving at here, but. Well, monetary policy certainly affects global dynamics. And, and if, if the president's agenda is to help create a multipolar world, I'm wondering how our financial policies would affect that and certainly the diplomatic efforts that you are incorporating with other countries. Well, I'm not going to comment on multipolar world because I'm not sure exactly what you're driving at there, but certainly we work with other countries in order to make sure that American businesses are um, treated fairly um, in international commerce. Okay, thank you. I yield back. Mr. Spokane. I yield 20 